<laughs> Greetings, everybody, and welcome. I'm David Du Bois, and I'm the president of the Fairfield Cultural Alliance, sponsoring today's uh, celebration of Fairfield as a great place. Two months ago, Mayor Malloy asked me to attend the Great Places workshop in Des Moines to determine how we might get involved this year. When I saw this year's emphasis was on community planning and community involvement, I knew we well had a great chance of winning. Most communities were proposing a one or two projects based on a month or so of planning. In typical Fairfield style, of course, we had 19 projects, uh, integrating four proposals from last year. And uh, these projects were based on a very extensive uh, planning process of a year and a half, the strategic planning committee, and I'm so delighted that many of them are here today because it really made writing a proposal very easy because of all of the extreme hard work that you had done involving more than 80 organizations within the community and uh, thinking everything through so very, very carefully and laying a foundation for at least half of the projects that we have and then the other half creating a climate that made them easy to just spontaneously burst forth and become a, a great project for our community. And the source, of, the font of this creative energy, of course, is our mayor, Ed Malloy. As John W. Gardner put it, leaders conceive and articulate goals that lift people and unite them in pursuit of objectives um, worthy of their best efforts. And I think that's a great description of our leader in the Great Places Initiative and in the strategic planning process. So to introduce today's program and special guests, please welcome <coughs> Mayor Ed Malloy. Thank you very much. I think uh, everyone in the room knows better that uh, it's pretty easy to lead this community because we are a community of leaders. So I really salute all of you out there today. I've just gotten over the pinch me, uh, not dreaming stage of uh, the Iowa Great Places and have settled into the fact that Fairfield has been selected as one of Iowa's Great Places. It is a very, very distinct honor. It is something that I think in terms of its value to Iowa communities is only going to grow. Uh, the mystique of being selected this year I think was probably a hundred times what it was last year and Anita would agree with me on that. But I think accomplishing it this year was especially gratifying. Um, obviously, you know, we worked quite hard to do that, but to get to this stage is again quite an honor. And what we're doing today is we're throwing ourselves a party. <laughs> and in throwing a party, we have two very distinguished guests that uh, joined us. I'm very, very honored to have them today. Uh, to my left is uh, Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson. And to my right, Anita Walker, who is the Director of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs and Head of this Great Places Project. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for coming to celebrate this with us today. This was a journey, as, as David uh, described, and it began, we feel, uh, four years ago with a strategic planning process when we envisioned our community as being a great place. Uh, we, we were tickled to go back and read our mission statement when uh, we were going to uh, utilize the template of the strategic plan to describe where we were and what of all of our goals were. And when we read that we described ourselves as a shining star in among Iowa cities, featuring a revived and vibrant downtown, dynamic growing economy, a regional center for cultural and the arts, blending our natural heritage with all the best elements of a big city, we said, <coughs> We had that vision uh, four years ago, so we, it really excited us to go forward and to, uh, to really map all of these great initiatives that are going on today to our strategic plan. Now, strategic plans tend to be documents that are well-intentioned, but don't really move off of the uh, shelf. And I was reminded of that quite a lot while we were going through this process. But I'm happy to say that in reviewing, uh, we have 
I think we had a, a total of 76 different initiatives, and there are about 60% of those that have some activity going on. Some of them are already fulfilled. Some of those are in our great places. And that group uh, that put together our strategic plan uh, dedicated about 15 months in doing so, and I'm not sure that they've really gotten the recognition that they deserve for what they put together for our community. So I'd like to start by asking those uh, members that are out here that served on our strategic planning committee to please rise and be recognized. From there, the journey took us to last year's proposals where we were encouraged to be wildly creative and out of the box in terms of what we actually presented to the uh, Department of Cultural Affairs for our great place. And we had four, I believe, proposals, maybe five, from Fairfield alone. And uh, each in and of themselves were very compelling. Uh, but we were not designated last year. And this year we decided, well, we really we want to kind of consolidate our strength, put all of these into one proposal, map it to our strategic plan, and uh, if that doesn't do it for us, we'll work harder. <laughs> but we were able to get that, and we're very, very proud of that. And I know many of you uh, out here are involved in those projects and contributed in some way. The Iowa Great Places uh, project itself began by, with a challenge from the uh, governor probably two years ago to all of his agency heads to come up with programs that would uh, strengthen communities, make Iowa a better state. And it was the great creativity and vision of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs that came up with the concept of great places and really creating a challenge to communities around the state. And what's happened is that, as David mentioned, many communities are just in initial stages of planning and visioning you know, what they can be and who they are. But those are going to continue. They're, we are going to <coughs> reap great, great rewards from this program. So to tell us a little bit about its inception and also to give us uh, some remarks on uh, Fairfield's great place, I'd like now to invite, and it's again my great pleasure, a dear friend, someone who has been here for art walks, <coughs> has probably eaten at Regina's uh, good <coughs> half a dozen times, knows most of our restaurants quite well, knows all of our artisans, has been here for conferences many, many times. I think she's, uh, when we need Anita Walker, she's always there for us. So it's a pleasure to uh, introduce, uh, again, the head of the uh, Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, Anita Walker, to make a presentation. <laughs> two things you need for a great place, and that's great food and great people, and I always like to go to Fairfield in great quantity. So thank you, thank you so much, all of you, for coming here today. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much also for joining us. And there's a few other people that do need thanks. First and foremost, this community for stepping up and really finding a way to work together to develop such an innovative and creative concept for great places that we know and are convinced will become a reality and is, as we speak, even as I was driving around town seeing construction underway, I could see the Great Places Initiative coming to life. Um, Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson and Governor Bill Sack have been enthusiastic about Iowa Great Places, and without them, we would not have this program because they picked it <laughs> among all the proposals, and I don't know how many you had to look through, thousands probably from the different state agencies, but it's their commitment to the vitality of Iowa and the strength of our communities that led them to select Iowa Great Places as one of the initiatives that we would pursue. And I know we have legislators in the room, um, brand new ones and <laughs> veteran legislators. If you could stand up, please, and be acknowledged. that it is truly a partnership between the executive branch and the legislative branch. And it was our legislature, and this is the truth, I tell this story with a straight face, actually with a smile on my face. Uh, the department went to the legislature last year. And you know, the first year of Iowa Great Places, when you came in the first time, we didn't have any new money. We just had a promise to work together to deliver the collective capacity of state government to help make your dreams a reality. Well, it's working, 
But we thought, you know, a little money wouldn't hurt. <laughs> there are a few gaps in the state funding streams. So we went to the legislature and we said, how about a million dollars for Iowa Great Places? <clears throat> and you know what happened? They turned us down flat. No way, they said. We are not going to give you a million dollars. We're going to give you six million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, legislature. <laughs> that will be available over the next two years for our six new uh, great place um, uh, endeavors and projects. So uh, there's a little bit more to work with as you uh, work on your strategic plan and making these great places initiatives come true. You know, the, to me, Fairfield is really the quintessential example of the idea behind great places. And it was probably swimming around in the heads of the designers and creative people who came up with Iowa Great Places in the first place. Because Great Places, first and foremost, calls on Iowans to focus on what is real and genuine and authentic about your place. It's not asking Iowa cities to become Portland or Austin or Seattle. I call that Portland Ebbing. It's, it's, it's asking you to focus on the genuine assets that make your place what it is, that gives it its identity. Every time I come to Fairfield, I know that I'm here. You can feel the <laughs> Because there is an authentic identity about Fairfield. And I think one of the things that's so amazing and special about Fairfield is that you have found a way to bridge your past with the present. I mean, here we are in a building that used to be the manufacturer of equipment that you'd put in your barns. Here was a community on the forefront of the agricultural movement in Iowa. Uh, when horses were pulling the tractors, your Mazdan barns, you still revere and appreciate your heritage in the past that built this community. This community that was the first home of the Iowa State Fair. And yet today, you are a community in the heartland of Iowa that is known for innovation, for creativity, for cutting edge technology, for companies that are built on an idea and are then grown to serve the nation and even the world. That's Fairfield. And you've made it all happen here in one place. It is truly amazing. And it is truly what Iowa Great Places is all about. Iowa Great Places don't have just one thing, but they embrace all of the dimensions of a great place. And you were so uh, compelling in your presentation to our wonderful advisory board, who should also be thanked. Um, I know many of them wanted to be here today, but who have more than once got on a bus and traveled across Iowa to see all the aspiring great places and never had enough time in any one of them. But you did such a tremendous job of linking the dimensions of a great place, the infrastructure, the arts, the engaging experiences available here. And, and for me, one of your most powerful dynamics is the creative culture of Fairfield, that you embrace and are open to new ideas. And that is truly what's going to drive prosperity in the future. So I'm here really more than anything else to say congratulations, Fairfield. You are setting a high bar, and you are truly going to be a leader and a model, inspiring other communities as they move toward their great places dreams. Mayor, I'm glad that you mentioned that. that, that <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that while we were able to select six um, great places this year, that there are literally scores of other communities with people like you who have <coughs> hope and confidence and pride in their place, who have a sense of place, who are moving their initiative forward as well. And we will continue to help them and partner with them. And when they get to a point of readiness, we are hopefully uh, calling on our new elected leadership to help us provide the resources to move their initiatives forward. But our very first ones, uh, the, the places selected this year and the three pilots selected last year are really going to help us in state government learn how to do our jobs better, to coordinate, to harness our collective capacity to serve you. And as we create a, a new breakthrough model for partnership, 
between states and communities to develop green places. So congratulations. And at this point, Mayor, I would like, we have just a small plaque. I can present, perhaps, Lieutenant Governor, if you can help me do this. Uh, but we'll, we'll have you stand okay. between us and uh, this is a photo opportunity. <laughs> She understands our community, but she also understands what it takes to inspire that kind of vitality throughout the state. And uh, I feel very comforted to know that uh, she will continue this kind of a program throughout the state to reward more communities to come. But uh, don't let it end here. We, we want you for, in Fairfield for more reasons as well. This uh, award also, as I mentioned earlier, was a great team effort. <coughs> team that started last year, worked through uh, to this year, and um, really quite inspiring what was really put together to represent our community on behalf of our whole community. And I would like to now uh, recognize some of those people who were involved, step over here, have some certificates of appreciation from the city of Fairfield. The first one I'd like to present is to our uh, host and master of ceremonies today, David Du Bois. Uh, David, as he mentioned, uh, was available to go up last minute to uh, meeting for great places again, and came back with an inspiration and a story that made us feel like, yes, uh, although uh, last year's effort wasn't rewarded, it's worth going after this again, it really is worth doing this. And David has a great, great organizing skill, and a great, great people person, and a great, great vision. His vision for Fairfield as a creative community is probably as strong as, as anyone's. And his commitment and his passion to this effort uh, was unparalleled this year. And David, we really appreciate what you've done, so please uh, come up and accept the support. <laughs> I mentioned that we have great leaders in this community and we have great partnerships within all of our organizations. Represented here today are members of our County Board of Supervisors, our City Council, our Economic Development Association, our Chamber of Commerce, our Civic Center Board, our Convention and Visitors Bureau, our Trails Council, on and on and on. Our University, Marsh University of Management, and really all of those members uh, were significant in the role that they played. But very early on, uh, there were two women who really took a great part of the responsibility during our application process also from the Chamber of Commerce, the Fairfield Economic Development Association, and the CDB. And I'd like to present now Diane Gilmore from the uh, Chamber of Commerce and is also the Executive Director for the Economic Development Association. And I'd also ask Diane to receive Lucy Ismertz. Uh, Lucy, who was our Convention Business Bureau Director and has uh, moved on, but she was such a significant part of this, if you would accept it for Lucy as well, Diane. And thank you very much. For that. From our city council, uh, representing the city's position in our downtown streetscape, which I think was a major, major puzzle piece for this year's program, and someone that has been involved with the strategic planning process with many other grant applications, is also a member of this Fairfield Cultural Alliance and one of the founders, uh, Connie Boyer. Thank you. Uh, Another one of our bundles of creative energy, super entrepreneur, and another person whose vision is very big and very, very committed to our community. Someone who was really 
the inspirational originator of our effort last year to uh, approach the, the Iowa Great Places uh, Award and was a big part instrumental in this year is Bert Chanowski. <laughs> This, this next gentleman also uh, has no rivals when it comes to organizing power and the ability to write grants and, and uh, get them approved and also have a very, very big vision for something that many people might consider somewhat ordinary uh, within a community, that is to build a trail system, for instance. But when you put together the kind of vision that uh, Ron Blair and the Jefferson County Trails Council has, for creating something that's bigger than just a, uh, a, a trail, uh, something that ties in all of our natural points of heritage. And uh, he's done this with such grace and such ease, and I'm so glad that this was a part of our application because it was very special. Uh, Ron Blair. <laughs> I forgot to mention also that uh, mo most of the people that I'm introducing here were part of our presentation to the uh, Great Places uh, judges when they arrived. So these are people who prepared very well for a very brief three-minute talk to get all these concepts out as quickly as possible and did a wonderful, wonderful job. Next person, again, is someone who has boundless energy, boundless joy, and boundless vision for this community. Someone who has taken over a, what is basically the center of our cultural uh, importance here in Fairfield. It's something that has grown in reputation enormously over the last couple of years. It's a big, big part of our Great Places run from last year to this year. And that is the uh, president of the Art Walk Board, Holly Moore. Mm -hmm. team of gentlemen who were representing uh, Maharshi Vedic City in a very, very interesting, unique amenity there, the Vedic Observatory, which has a tourism base uh, all its own, very, very quietly up in the cornfields uh, a couple miles north of our city. But something very, very unique, very, very compelling within our application. And uh, I wanted to present to both Tim Fitzrandolph, who made the presentation uh, on that day for us, and also Kent Williams, Kent here, and Kent representing uh, the city as well. Thanks, Kent. I will also mention that uh, a very, very important part of this, and I was so happy to hear uh, Anita mention it, was our Mazden Barnes project because it really is a symbol of how important historic preservation is to our community and how creative the idea and the thoughts are about this concept. Uh, Mark Schaefer uh, did a brilliant job guiding us through this. He's not able to, uh, to be here today. Would, pardon me, Dick Reed. I would ask Mr. Dick Reed to accept for Mark, please. <laughs> visited by this team of judges traveling on a bus. We were their third day on the road of four. And that we had an hour to make our case. And we could do it any way we wanted to. We could tour the community, we could do whatever. We said, wow, we've got a lot, we've got a lot to tell, we've got a lot to show. And we thought, you know what? No, we're just gonna pick a place in our downtown that will give them the feel and the atmosphere of downtown. But we said there's just so much here, and we knew it was going to be a series of talking heads and a few display materials 
we said, I don't know, we, we have to do something more. We have to really catch the feel, the flavor of this community in some very, very compelling way. So my first thought was a video. And um, my first call was to Tim Hawthorne, who is president of Hawthorne Direct, a company that is 20 years old here in Fairfield this year, and is one of the premier advertising agencies in the country for long-form uh, television advertisement. And we know they've got all the equipment, we know they've got all the expertise, but when you're giving them two weeks' notice to pull something like this together, you just don't know what they're going to say. Tim instantly said yes. I received an email within 30 minutes from his production team, and we collected a lot of as much material as we could. And within 10 days, we had something that we're going to turn into a great marketing piece for Fairfield. And we owe a great debt of gratitude to Tim Hawthorne and his production team of Randy West and Kent Hoffmeister and Josh Young and uh, Bob Moore. Uh, anyone who is with uh, Hawthorne Direct, would you please come up and receive the uh, Mayor's Community Excellence Award for your work in the video production. Shara, who was the editor on this project, and I have to say that uh, um, this wasn't really a difficult one for me to decide to say yes to, because I got to say yes, and then these guys had to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> and they put in a lot of time. All I had to do was kind of take the leash off, let them go. It was their vision. Uh, Bob and I and a few other people went in and took a look at it. We had tears in our eyes. We said, that's it, go for it. And so uh, these are the guys that really put it together. So I'd like to thank them especially. I'd like to now present a copy uh, to Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson and also Anita Walker for their enjoyment. It's about seven minutes, so <laughs> I don't think that uh, we're so again, thank you all very, very much for all the contributions that you made. There are many others in the room that were part of this as well. Uh, it is my pleasure now to invite to uh, address us, again, as Anita had mentioned, uh, really the decision maker, the, the inspiration for this, what Governor Tom Vilsack Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson have done over the course of the last eight years has really changed the landscape of Iowa and inject an optimism and an enthusiasm about the state and about our communities on an individual basis. As I mentioned, this was a challenge from, from the governor's office to the state agencies because they passionately believe in Iowa, passionately believe in the future of Iowa's small town communities. And I couldn't think of a more brilliant way to incentivize and encourage that. I don't believe there's any program like this that exists anywhere in the uh, state of Iowa. So we're very fortunate in the closing days of their administration to have with us today to help celebrate and enjoy this great, great event, uh, our Lieutenant Governor, Sally Peterson. very great pleasure uh, to be here and be part of this celebration. Um, I'm not sure what's left uh, to be said, uh, but um, you know, I think I might just uh, start by uh, sharing a little story with you because uh, a lot of times people wonder what it is that lieutenant governors uh, do, and I, uh, I eat a lot. I, I, attend, uh, I attend a lot of lunches and a lot of dinners, and um, eight years ago, not too long after we were elected, uh, I, I was attending a dinner in um, Decorum at the Winnesheek Hotel. And, um, you know, I was new to my job. Um, this was a very sort of formal affair. We were um, at round tables with linen tablecloths and candelabras, and we each had little place cards. And um, the gentleman sitting next to me, he hadn't a clue who I was, he looked over at my place card and said, The Honorable Sally J. Peterson. 
And he said, uh, what makes you so honorable? <laughs> and I said, well, uh, I'm your lieutenant governor. But I said I was honorable before I became lieutenant governor. <laughs> I was trying to stay that way. <laughs> well, eight years later, I think I'm going to exit and, and maybe still, still be able to keep that, uh, keep that on. It has been an honor to serve as lieutenant governor. It has been an honor to serve with Tom Vilsack. You know, he inspired me. When I first heard him uh, speak, and it was you know just in somebody's living room, and he talked about what he wanted to do and where he wanted to lead our state, and he talked in such grandiose terms, you know he didn't have aspirations of uh, you know sort of bringing Iowa kind of up nationally. He was talking about making us a world leader in this and a world leader in that and being competitive internationally. Uh, you know, if there were other inhabited planets, I think it would have been, you know, a, 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 a first. And, you know, he, he lit a, a, a fire in me. And I, I loved the fact that he believed Iowa could do these things. And I'd never heard anybody talk that way before. And I was 48 years old. You know, I'd lived in this state my entire life. And I'd never really heard anyone have that kind of confidence and set those kind of goals for us as Iowans. And so that's what brought me on board. And what I've loved about serving with Governor Vilsack is that's, that's what we've been about uh, in our eight years. And he's, as we've reached one goal, and we've reached many of them, then he's just, you know, sort of sets the bar higher. Well, now let's see if we can't do this, and let's see if we can't do that. Ed Moa, you were part of that. Uh, we put together in the very beginning months a, uh, a strategic planning group uh, called the 2010 Group, a strategic plan for Iowa for uh, the next decade. And um, if you go back, if you have a copy of that report, I'm sure Ed's got one someplace on a shelf someplace, <laughs> you look at, at the goals that were set by those Iowans that gathered in communities all across our state and said, here's what we could be, here's what we could do in the next decade. And you know we've met or exceeded most every goal that was set. And you know you don't inspire people by setting mediocre goals to make. You inspire people by setting out a dream and a vision for what you can do. Well, I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't already know, because the city of Fairfield has been a big dreamer. Uh, someone, as we were standing in the buffet line, uh, said to me when we were talking about great places, says, Fairfield is a great place, but I suppose everybody thinks they live in a great place. No, it's not true. Not everybody does believe they live in a great place. And when uh, Anita and I travel around uh, the you know, 950 communities in this state, uh, there, there, are many, there are many communities that aren't dreaming. But there are a whole lot more communities that are dreaming today than we're dreaming eight years ago. And many of those have met their initial dreams and then gone beyond to set new goals and higher goals to achieve. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing to see. So I'm very uh, pleased and excited uh, to be here in Fairfield again, uh, to see that you've come together and taken advantage of this program that the state has to offer. And I have absolutely no doubt that you will meet and then exceed the goals that you've set for yourself. And the state is very happy to be able to partner with you in doing that. So thank you very much for allowing me and for allowing Anita to be here and, uh, and share in this very special day for a very great place uh, here in Iowa. Thank you all. It's actually one o'clock and we uh, finished on time. So, uh, so I guess I have to ditch that other speech. <laughs> Any, anyway, you know, we're only, we're, you had a year and a half, 15 months of planning, and then uh, launched into three years now it's been. So uh, we're early in our midterm grade report. Looks like we did okay. So uh, I'm really excited to see what everyone produces in the next six years. So thanks a lot for coming out. Thank you.